Thank you, everyone. Always wonderful to start with an applause, so <laughs> that's always great. Uh, yeah, what well, Anime taught me about communities development and tech careers. Very excited for this session and amazing to see so many people, particularly on, on Friday. Uh, so really great to see so many people. So here is a Venn diagram. Uh, <laughs> I think it's kind of uh, easy to understand but yeah if you are an anime and communities fan and you both know both then very much a welcome you are right there on this sweet spot you're doing great thank you so much for attending uh, this session is for you very much I think if you know communities but you don't know anime at all then um, you will likely learn a lot about um, anime so welcome and, and enjoy if you know anime but you're new to Kubernetes, then you will definitely learn about Kubernetes. So that's really great as well. Welcome to you as well. And if you don't know either one, so if you know nothing about Kubernetes and you know nothing about anime, then you might be a tad bit confused <laughs> throughout the whole session. Uh, but maybe you will learn something as well. So it's all right as well. But that's the kind of audience here, hopefully. So who am I? I'm Annie. Uh, I am a senior product marketing manager at Camunda, as just mentioned. Um, it's an end-to-end process orchestration and automation company, very developer friendly. But yeah, and I'm also a CNCF ambassador as well as an Azure MVP. And I am a Kubernetes and CNCF meetup co-organizer for Finland for almost five years now, as well as I coach early stage startups. And then I also co-host a Cloud Cossip podcast you can find from there. So this is the usual slide that I do in conferences every time, but now I do want to obviously add that, yes, I'm a huge fan of anime as well as manga and all of the kind of things that come with that. Um, and maybe as a kind of uh, mark there, uh, I stopped counting how many animes, like how many different animes I've watched at the 150 mark. So after that, I was like, okay, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Let's just keep watching and it's all good. Um, so I can definitely say that I have clearly over 10,000 hours. That's the expert amount, I guess, uh, in. So it's all nice. Yeah. So what is this session? It's maybe a uh, bit of a special or order session in KubeCon for sure. Uh, but we are in the 101 track. So this will be kind of basics of Kubernetes, will be portion of the session, uh, taking you through uh, what's those kind of things. And then uh, it's also a relaxed, fun take on things. So it's, it's not a, this is not a very super serious session, not at all, to be honest. So uh, that's the kind of expectation management here. And as a uh, maybe mini warning, there's going to be GIFs, so there's going to be a lot of flashing maybe sometimes, but none of it will be full screen, so no worries uh, at all. It will be hopefully tasteful. Yeah. Then the agenda for today, introduction going on strong right now, really nice. Uh, and then we're going to move to Battle Illustrated Anime Fans Guide to Kubernetes in the spirit of the Fippies, uh very well illustrated guide to Kubernetes, essentially. Um, and then we are moving to Kubernetes components in anime fashion. And then we have 10 lessons learned from anime. Uh, and with one bonus lesson, lesson in the end as well. So that's the agenda for today. Uh, and now, done with introduction, we're doing well, perfectly. And then we're going to move to Badly Illustrated Anime Fans Guide to Kubernetes. So, if you are a aspiring anime hero, the main character and so forth, you are all alone in the world, or maybe not alone, you're surrounded, but alone. You are starting your journey. You probably need a lot of learning. You need a lot of leveling up. You're just getting started. It's a scary world around you. There's a lot of things happening, but you're just looking for a home, a place to call your own. Uh, there might be a lot of people uh, in the anime world who are like this. For example, Naruto started off as a very misunderstood character in his own place. There was a lot of things around him, but definitely he did not feel at home or, or at ease at his own uh, place. There are other examples. For example, uh, Senna from iShield21 uh, uh, bullied in his own school, uh, trying to find his, his place in the world and um, kind of surrounded by a lot of things, but not truly. Uh, at ease either. There are other examples, obviously, as well. There's Shinzi from Neon Genesis Evangelion as well, or plenty of others who might have had big turbulences in their life. They are going through a lot of different things, a lot of things surrounding them, but they are still don't feel quite where they should be. So, what does this all, what does this story mean in the Kubernetes context then, if you're wondering? 
Well, this is actually quite close to how, for example, an application would feel like uh, if it was not in a container. So uh, it would be in an, in an environment, <laughs> it would be feeling a bit kind of surrounded by a lot of things, attract uh, and so forth, and, and it would need a place to call its own. Uh, for example, it would be a PHP app that might uh, include web server, readable file system, PHP engine itself, so it has an environment and so forth, but it's not at ease in its own environment, such as the main characters here are as well. So, how do we fix this? How do we get to the next place? Well, uh, hopefully there is going to be an amazing uh, Shinobi school, ninja school that reaches out to you and gets you started on a curriculum there. Um, or maybe you start playing American football and you really find your people there. Or you find a big, big mecca to pilot and get started on that journey yourself. Uh, so really, these are a chance of a lifetime, really great things that will improve your standing a lot. So this is what a container would be for you if you would be in the Kubernetes world and not in the anima world itself. So container provides an isolated context where the app uh, and together with this environment can actually run in peace. And isolated containers often need to be though managed and connected to the outside world. So there's a bunch of challenges come in from there. So it is not yet the perfect location yet for our main character or our application. So then we got to find uh, something else. We have got to connect to a bigger, bigger world, connect to other things, connect to a team, and so forth. So as you are eventually practicing your skills, you're moving forward, you're learning more uh, different shinobi skills, you're learning about piloting your mecha, you are going forward in the catching footballs, getting stronger, faster, and so forth. You move on and you work together and you are starting to become a part of a community that helps you around there, which is when you then your container, you become orchestrated in Kubernetes there. So uh, it is Kubernetes is then a project led by CNCF, KubeCon very much. Probably a lot of you have, all of you have heard about Kubernetes by this point of the week for sure. Uh, so it is a way uh, to focus on building a robust platform for running thousands of containers in production. So it is the next step in your journey. And this is the new home that you will start to build for yourself while you are in your main character anime hero journey. Then next up, you learn more skills and you need to name them. So obviously you're gonna start having a skill, then you call it out, uh, you might yell Bankai, Kamehameha, or any one of these things to kind of, you know, label things for sure as well. Uh, another part of it is, would be that in your anime journey, you would also find a role within that team that you have found for yourself. So such as Sakura here and part of team Kakahashi would have become, starting to become a medic, find their own role and give a label to it and so forth. So this is obviously in the Kubernetes world, it's labels. So Kubernetes uses labels as name tags to identify things and it can query these uh, based on these labels and they are, labels are open-ended and you can use them to identify their roles and stability and a lot of important attributes as well. So as in anime world with the naming of moves, moves, naming of different team characters to have a role in Kubernetes labels are very important as well. Then as you progress further, you hone your team skills further, you get to even more together, uh, and then you find yourself in a pot essentially. Um, and in a Kubernetes world, pot is the, uh, represents the runnable unit of work that you usually have. Uh, it usually has a single container inside a pot, but there are cases where you might have more inside the same pot as well. Um, so pods are the smallest deployable units in computing and you can create and manage in Kubernetes. So as is this little Shinobi unit here, it is a small unit that can be deployed out there, uh, go for it, conquer the world. But there are other things obviously as well, but before we get to that, we can go and discuss about, okay, so what kind of moves will you learn? What kind of moves are important for Shinobi to learn uh, and while they're learning about, well, obviously cloning techniques. You need to, yeah, you need to start cloning yourself very effectively to learn how to battle all of the important villains and foes that you need to take on, which is then obviously in the Kubernetes world, the replica sets. So replica sets uh, provide clone, you can clone yourself and you can demand any number of times on demand, uh, which is essentially what Naruto does as well. 
very interesting in my opinion. Uh, so replica sets provide logic for scaling uh, the pod up and down, and it can be used for rolling deploys as well. And its purpose is to maintain a stable set of replica pods running at any given time, and as such, it's often used to guarantee the availability of a specified number of identical pods, as you can see in the image Naruto is doing as well. So, all throughout this journey, you have now learned a lot. Uh, you have some skills, you know how to clone yourself, it's looking quite nice, you have your small team, it's all working really well. Well, what about the bigger picture? You need to connect to a lot of other things as well. So, then you need services, which would be the grander village, other teams around you. You really need to kind of, you know, identify yourself and to be able to identify other teams in your vicinity so that you can switch an information and know more about it which then in the Kubernetes world would be services. So with services, you can discover others and they can discover you. So it really goes to the Kubernetes network model. So every pod gets its own IP address as well. And this means that you do not need to explicitly create links between pods and you almost never need to deal with mapping container ports to host ports as well. So you become part of the bigger world. So you have now, you have a team, uh, you're working with a team, you're connected to the bigger world as well. Uh, you know, cloning skills, it's all looking very fine uh, for you. Then uh, what do you do when you start to have a lot of different things, you're um, getting more gear, you're getting more information, then you need storage and therefore you need volumes to store everything that you have. So all the gear that you uh, get, all of the other things that you encounter along your, uh, along your journey, because when you become a hero, you obviously get a lot more weapons, skills and so forth, as you can see here. So in the Kubernetes world, this would be volume. So containers can access and store information, um, application and the volume. And the, from the application perspective, the volume appears as part of the local file system and volumes can be packed by a lot of different storage backends as well. Then while you are in this journey, you're now, uh, you have your storage, you have your skills, you have your team, you have your grander picture, then, uh, you will need to maybe things start to be a bit hectic. You feel a bit lost again, even though that you have all of these great things around you, then you obviously need namespaces uh, to have a bit more privacy and peace in your find. You maybe start meditating. You maybe start uh, figuring out, okay, what's my place in the world uh, and so forth to continue daily battles and even more effectively. So namespaces in Kubernetes function as a grouping mechanism inside Kubernetes and uh, replica sets volumes and everything can be easily collaborate together with the namespace. So when you have a lot of different egos in an anime team uh, that would be clashing towards each other, such as Naruto and Sasuke, for example, would be with these kind of mechanisms, you can help this and uh, not be battling internally constantly, for example, in the animal world and in the Kubernetes world, obviously, namespaces help with that as well. So after all of this, now your badly illustrated anime guy, finance guide to Kubernetes is over and you are ready to rock and roll. Uh, and become the shinobi that you have always meant to be, as you can see here as well. Um, yeah, then, now that we're done with the badly illustrated anime fans guide to Kubernetes, we can move to Kubernetes components, a uh, quick guide to them. So, here is a architecture image here, and is, as you can see here, the Kubernetes cluster consists of a set of worker machines called nodes, and uh, they have run containerized applications inside of them. And then you have the worker nodes that host the pods that are the components of the application workload. So now uh, the control plane uh, is a lot leaner and um, uh, not as bulky in a way, but then at the same time, the nodes do the most of the work, but the control plane is the one that controls all of the others. So then in the animal world, it would look something like this. You have Kakahashi controlling the team, uh, telling the little nodes, aka Naruto, Sasuke, and uh, Sakura, telling them what to do and what to do in the next step as well. So this is a one example of how this would look like in the world. And like, there's a bonus there as well. There's a Hokake in there in the uh, uh, cloud uh, API provider point, because then it's giving even higher level of instructions from there. So this is one part of it, but if you put it into another part, we would get 
Death Note, and we have uh, the, mas yeah, <laughs> the Mastermind L controlling all the different Japanese task force members. And I think this example is particularly uh, fitting because L itself is a very much a mastermind behind uh, everything, telling uh, all the others to do a lot of the kind of more bulky heavy lifting for sure. Now, this analogy doesn't maybe work for all cases, uh, because I think for the straw hats, uh, you can technically say <laughs> that Luffy is in control because he is the captain, but is he really? M most of the time, probably not. So it, it doesn't always hold up, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, but those are the community's components in Anime World handled briefly there. So then we get to 10 lessons learned from anime. Lesson number one, importance of a team. So as always, uh, from One Piece to Naruto, we've talked about the team a lot here today. Uh, there is, from Naruto to One Piece to Neon Genesis Evangeline, there's always a really uh, overarching team, the team that makes, is what makes you succeed, and it's what will kind of uh, get you to the next level, particularly in One Piece, for example, the sum of the uh, people alone is not as strong as them together, working towards a common goal. Um, and as in a really important lesson there, everyone has a role to play within the team, and it's really good that everyone has a specified role as well. And the same really apply to Kubernetes and the tech world in general. If you are in an engineering team, for example, it makes sense to have your own role, but also everyone should be playing together really nicely and complementing each other and working together to build uh, really great uh, applications and infrastructure. So uh, what's the next level from this basic team? Obviously, if you can, you could combine yourself into a one major thing that you're kind of really becoming together and taking it to the next level, becoming a uh, essentially one big mecha where you're combining everything together. Now, what would be the Kubernetes world or technology world equivalent of this? Well, it would likely be this. So if you have this long list of things that requires need from you, uh, this would definitely be something that would be the combining mecca of the uh, Kubernetes and tech world for sure. Hard to find. If it was, if someone had all of these uh, skills as a full stack developer, pretty much a unicorn for sure. Yeah. Then next up we have there's always going to be characters and uh, people around you with mysterious characters with dark past. And Sasuke here is a great example of that. He's a bit uh, emo, maybe a bit mysterious, maybe mopes in a corner a bit, never smiles, a bit cold hearted and doesn't really say that much, but has a lot to leverage from his past as well, because all of those hardship has taught them a lot. And now they can kind of leverage that, but they are a bit moody and they are, you know, kind of um, a bit their own thing. Uh, there's probably a lot of different people in development teams with this kind of um, nature, or it depends on personalities as well. But I think one great example of people with a lot of dark, mysterious past uh, and a bad lot to give at the same time would be, for example, mainframe coders. They probably <laughs> are back there in the room telling stories, but yeah, it's, it's a great, great position to be in at. Yeah, so then, Lesson three, self-development. So with any anime fight, you always have, um, well, even a fight or multiple fights. If you're trying to beat a big villain, you, you know, end up uh, inevitably, you need to get new skills, you need to scale up, you need to get a lot of new skills fast. Essentially, you need to go quite often to literal or metaphorical cave and just level up <laughs> as fast as you can and come out of there and, and get moving. Um, and really, these kind of things are, are really great and lead to a lot of great triumphant moments in, in animes, for example. But I think also um, there's a lot of great examples in Bleach or in Dragon Ball and so forth. Uh, and this obviously applies really well to tech careers in general uh, and Kubernetes world as well. So 
uh, what would be the Kubernetes or technology world equivalent of going to a cave and really skilling yourself up and coming out? Well, for example, convincing your manager to get you a KubeCon ticket, coming here, leveling yourself up, and emerging a completely new person with so many new skills and uh, knowledge that you're going to then wow everyone with all of your skills. Uh, another thing would be, for example, if you get a, um, a Linux Foundation or CNCF Foundation certification. So then you're again going somewhere, training yourself and emerging as a new person with new skills. And particularly uh, in anime world, usually when you come out of that cave, you get, come out with fancy new weapons, badges, outfits. So what would be better than having a certification badge in your LinkedIn profile, for example? It's essentially the same thing as Bankai or, or any of these fancy acts. Yeah. Then next up, we have uh, you need to take time to relax. And this image here is a bit take giving it away because there's the very infamous beach episode always that comes up at some point. Uh, so it's, I think, a great lesson to learn to take time for yourself, have holiday, have breaks, because if the world conquering anime heroes of uh, you know, unparalleled scale and, and um, skills, they need to take a time off, go to the beach, base, play some volleyball, do some errands, uh, then you definitely need to as well. So it's always good to remember. And I think another great uh, comparison here would be a feature freeze. So you have to, you know, pay back technical debt and then you can't advance the plot line, aka develop new features during that time. So it's, it's all connected there. Then after you have taken that vacation, you're taking the holiday, you're ready to uh, get back to work, uh, either as an anime hero or as a developer, uh, then you always need to remember to be prepared to get to take ready to take action and obviously monitor your surrounding as well, which then might lead you to jumping out of your school window uh, to take action immediately when uh, the monsters get near your high school or any other um, area that you have. And obviously in the tech world, this would particularly be on the importance of monitoring as well as having visibility into your cluster, for example. And most importantly, in the terms of this image, is reacting to that action as well. So it's not that you just get information that, okay, there's an issue, as a anime hero would get that, you know, there's a monster nearby. You also have to take action, fast action. You have to jump out and you have to get going. Then. Next up, we have the importance of documentation. Uh, this is a bit connected to the labels part as well uh, in, in, in the animal world, because I think what would be better documentation? You know, what's the, what's the priorities for documentation? You need to tell your team members what you're doing, and you need to provide a historical context of what you're doing. Well, what would be better than yelling every single move that you do out loud? Everyone knows exactly what you're doing. There's no questions about what's happening and why. It's maybe a bit of a weird thing that the villains don't realize this, but luckily there's no villains in the engineering uh, uh, team rooms and so forth. So yelling your moves out loud is only beneficial for everyone. So importance of documentation is really highlighted in anime world for sure. And I think uh, in the development world, in the Kubernetes world, uh, we are no stranger to enduring in long fights, uh, and neither is any Dragon Ball Z character either. So you really need to brace yourself for longer fights uh, and have the marathon endurance to really um, continue working together, as well as fighting all of these villains or creating your clusters and so forth. Um, and actually, I think, in, interestingly, replica sets really apply here as well, because you might need to have new people coming into the fights as well occasionally. So uh, you need to switch people between fights as well if they are very long. Yeah. And after you have now, you have everything working really nicely and you have attended the KubeCon and you're like, OK, there's a lot of things that I can, I can take home. And then you start piling up more and more and more different CNCF projects into your environment, uh, then you might uh, accidentally become the monster that you despise. If you end up having way too much complexity, uh, it becomes hard to manage. You become overcome with everything. For example, if you end up with multiple service meshes running and it all becomes just a tad bit too much uh, as far as confusion and complexity goes. Uh, so 
all of the times when a lot of characters for sure from um, Dragon Ball Z to Bleach to Naruto have been taken over by their dark side. This is something that we should divide. And there's obviously, luckily, you can add more complexity by adding more um, projects that help you with that, such as Meshery and so forth. Yeah. Then, next up, we have the fundamental, I think, principle of cloud native, as well as fundamental principle of communities that's very well present in classical animes as well, which is ridiculous power scaling. <laughs> because you have these scenes where it's over 9,000, it's getting crazy. Um, so for sure, I think we've all had our moments of these when we are thinking about our in infinite scaling and uh, all of the tropes that come with that. Yeah. Then we have one lesson left and one bonus lesson left. Uh, and the next one is, I think, very important, at least to me personally, which is always have a snack at hand. I get very hangry, <laughs> and I think all the anime characters get very hangry as well, or very, very, very weak if they don't eat. So remember to eat, remember to keep your energy up, drink water, and so forth. And I think this is another great lesson that one can take away from the anime world as well, to life as well as to uh, development and Kubernetes and all of the above. But there's one bonus lesson left, which is uh, the most important one out of them all, which I think is a very much an overarching theme across all of these anime series, which is believe in yourself. So, you know, if you can do it, go ahead, brace yourself, get stronger, get faster, and really kind of live up to your potential and expectations. And if that fails and you feel like you're hopeless and everything's kind of really going badly and you're fighting a villain that you cannot beat, just start flashing, uh, grow your hair long. It's all going to work out after that. There will be no issues that you cannot beat if you get to this stage. But if you yell out a bit too hard, you, uh, your hair gets frayed, it's all going a bit badly after that, no worries because you will just end up being the most powerful person in the whole universe. So it's all right even if it goes a bit too far. You might go bald, but that's all right. That's the sign of your true power and your conquering of the world of power for sure. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. This was the session. All right. Uh, if you have any question, uh, just hand you out. Uh, I'm going to pass the mic to yours. Any questions? I think so. You're great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all yeah, completely it's clear. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks for attending. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Uh, what's your favorite uh, anime then? Uh, that's the most difficult question <laughs> for sure. Uh, well, for me, I started with Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, so that's kind of like super close to my heart. But then I think I really like Bleach when going further. But from other genres, I really like Nana and other things as well. But I think one of my favorites is Darker Than Black as well. Uh, which is a bit less well known. And there, but there's a lot. There's too many. One Piece is a classic as well. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, thanks for attending and have a good rest of the day. Thank you, Annie.